to the compound and saw the children. Four young children, beautiful children, three boys, one girl. He had so hypnotized the children that they should not speak and they should never say anything that has been happening in the house. When I came into the compound and saw the children, four young children, beautiful. When I came into the compound and saw the children, four young children, beautiful children, three boys, one girl. He had so hypnotized the children that they should not speak and they should never say anything that has been happening in the house. I came in with the crew, with all the directors from the ministry and the permanent secretary. And so sad, we did all we could. We met a friend of his there who has stationed himself to monitor what is happening and the nanny that visits them to take care of the children. So when I was asking questions, the children, I saw that they were not forthcoming. And uh, I now excuse everyone out. I said I needed to have one and one with the children. So I sent all the children in. I asked the nanny to take them in. I started with the first son. I said, do you love your mommy? He said, yes. Has your mommy taught you to tell lies? He said, no. I said, you know that, she, is she alive or dead? He said, she's dead. You know that she's now your angel and she's watching you. She'll be very sad if you tell lies. And here, I introduced myself and I told him that the president is concerned, every Nigerian is concerned, we all join them to mourn Osinachi's death. But what we want from him is the truth. If they want us to help them, all I want from you is the truth. The boy adjusted his seat. He looked at me. I said, do you fear God? Did your mom teach you how to pray and speak the truth? He said, yes. Then he opened up. There was nobody, myself, himself, and my permanent secretary. And thank God, my permanent was recording everything. The boy now opened up and said that their dad used to beat their mom, and their mom was always sad. She would always sad and thinking he would beat her and fling her off. He doesn't spare them himself, that he gathered them in the room and will be beating them with a big belt. If the mom comes in to ask him to stop, he will turn back on her, beat her, lift her, fling her up. And that has always been the issue. And that they are always scared and that he doesn't go out, he's always in the home. It's the mom that runs around, she goes for her gospel music, bring back the money. In fact, if the money is paid through cash, uh, through a bank account, it's paid to his account. She has no account of her own. Any cash she comes back with, he collects it. And he will give just a peanut to her for feeding. In fact, the boy said, he eats more than them. He will give mommy small money, and when she cooks, the next minute he starts shouting and beating her, that he is always shouting. And their mom, was living in fear, always sitting sad. Oh, it was such a horrible story to hear from a young boy of just 12. The eldest son is 12. And because of the trauma the children went through, I asked him which class he is. He's in class 5 at the age of 12. Why? He said he can't even read. A boy of 12 years can't even read. So mentally, this child is already destroyed. Retarded, yes. Completely. I was battling with tears. So when I finished, I asked him to move to the other side. I called the nanny to bring in the second child. The second son, wonderful, beautiful son, who is also gifted. Mm -hmm. I learned that he sings well. They mentioned it, so I asked him, I said, can you sing for me? When he sang, you could hear his voice like an angel. The DPO was, had just come to do some investigation and he met me there. We were all battling with tears. The DPO, a man, couldn't help his tears. 
the second son explained the same horrible situation that they've all been going through. <coughs> so my parents said, even these two were enough. The other two, when I said, okay, call them and uh, let's just... Uh, the third one said, no, mommy, I hate you, I want to talk. The little one, they insisted that they, they would also tell their story. So we sent everyone out and we listened to each one of them, one after the other. In fact, the last one is seven. Mm -hmm. A girl, the only girl in the house. <coughs> it's so sad. This is a situation that I'm calling on all Nigerians to stand with us and demand justice for Osinachi and these children must be protected because he is not just a bully. I lack words to describe this man. And it is sad that women, so many women are living and dying in abusive marriage. This is one out of so many that we are hearing. He stopped, he stopped her from communicating with the entire family. None of her brothers come to the house. None of her sisters come to the house. I learned that she has a twin sister. Nobody comes in. Even when he beat her out of her and she was rushed to the hospital, he took her to the hospital. And when the brother had, he went there and he remained there and never allowed the brother to talk to her until she was an oxygen.